Hello, and welcome back to Making Mannequin Heads into Planters! But, uh... Great intro, right? Every time? Yeah! Um, so, welcome back, and I left you where Barney, the Barnacle Man, thank you, Terry, for the naming of the Barnacle Man, um, got some good painting going on, and, um, I don't know what accent that was, it was almost like an Australian went to New Zealand for the day, but stopped by Transylvania. <laughs> You're like, what the hell? Yeah. Welcome to my world. That's where my brain went. So, anywho, I am going to create a tilting spot so that I can paint. Oh my gosh. Stop it, Patrick. They're coming off everywhere. These little guys on the sides are very delicate. I keep losing little barnacles here and there. I'll, I'll glue them back on eventually. But I don't want to lose them, so I need to, to paint them. And I want him to be in a safe place while I paint him. Here we go. Propped between. Hey, look at there. That's good. All right, cool. So what I did was I got out a number of colors that are bright. I wanted to go bright on this. And so I have a bright orange. This one is called, it's the Deco Art Pumpkin Patch. Love the pumpkin color. And then I have the very endings of bright copper that I'm working with. I've got some of the bronze. Yeah, so you'll notice, what are these? These are the metallics. So I'm gonna have to like stick that one upside down. I've got a coral color. This is beautiful. This is one of those samples that somebody didn't like it. <laughs> A whole room of that coral. Yeah. That'd be, that would be wake up and go color. And this is the wake up and um, rubber ducky color, <laughs> yellow, which I love, it's beautiful. Uh, especially for what I'm doing, it's beautiful. I don't know if I'm gonna get anything out of this bright copper. I may just dip it right in. Let's go for, I want to be really careful while painting on these, because really what I'm working for, there we go, there's some in there, is to get them so that they're not so fragile and brittle. So I'm going to not do the same color on all of these little guys. I'm going to go around. Now the color is going to change as I go. I have a new fresh um, brush. And I think because there's almost none of this left over, um, I'm just going to go around and get some paint on. Um, I've got a little brush for getting inside of these barnacles. Um, but I think it'll reinforce them significantly if I can just get some paint on there. And then what I'm going to do is I will do a few colors. I don't think I'm going to do areas of color. I've been thinking about it. Um, I do want them bright. So they're like, you know, underwater coral, kind of an idea, um, instead of just meh, barnacles. Um, yeah, and I'm running out already. No, 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 no. Let's have to put it on here. Um, what I want to do is make sure I don't break these as I paint them. So it's a little bit surgical and a lot of it get to paint on and get it bright. I'm not gonna get any more, huh? There we go. Oh, there's some bloop. Um, and what I like about the metallic is that it'll, it'll show through uh, here and there, because as I go over these with other colors, I'm not gonna completely cover in a lot of places. And so you'll see this beautiful sort of glow um, coming out with the metallic color. Oh, there we go. Digging deep, digging deep. Uh, getting the color. Oops, okay, that's eyebrow. Oh, no, not that. There we go. That was easy enough. This is going to be very messy for my hands, but eh, who cares? It's just a little bit of paint and it will come right off. 
Um, one thing I have started doing when I paint inside the house is if I don't want to be having to work really hard to um, get the paint off when I'm painting a room or whatever, I have discovered, and I know you're probably going to be like, well, duh, Patrick, everybody does that. I have discovered rubber gloves. Now, it used to be, because of my age, I am 52 years old, uh, you could not buy, like, surgical gloves and stuff like that at CVS. Or if you could, they were, like, the really crappy ones that were um, very difficult to use, that did not fit well, and they were, they were kind of like, you know, the fingers were ginormous, and uh, they were kind of um, just sort of craft gloves. So I just use the disposables when I'm doing large painting projects because when I go into the office, I really want to not have to have paint all over my hands all the time. I didn't used to really care, and, but you know, cleaning up, it's like, oh God, it's so much easier when you just put gloves on. So if you want to wear gloves, I guess where I'm going with this is if you want to wear gloves, wear gloves. Um, Especially if you have like acrylic nails or uh, gel, you know, nails, ladies and gentlemen who do their nails. I have to do my nails. I know this is kind of a weird thing to talk about, but um, I have paper thin nails because I bit my nails for decades and therefore damaged the nail beds to the point where it's like my nails are um, super, super thin. And I gotta be careful where I have this on here. It, when I just have regular nails anymore, because I don't bite them anymore, um, they basically just shred. So what I do is I do clear UV acrylic, or you not acrylic, whatever it is, cute clear, blah, blah, clear UV polish stuff. I use OPI on mine, and they're still super short. And it's, reason that they're super short right now is because I went camping and I tried to keep them really short so I don't break my nails because it's one of those things where it's like oh I broke a nail well you know what the struggle is real dude because I used to make fun of that oh you broke a nail that's terrible well it is terrible because it can be very painful when they get too low I'm just gonna there we go and when you have really thin nails they will tear and they get really like bloody low. Of course, I used to bite them really, really, really low. Very nervous, nervous me, a uh, very nervous kid when I was a kid, not outwardly, very inwardly nervous. A lot of it was being gay at that era, in that era, um, was very difficult and not because my family, God bless them, but because of society because that was when it was still considered that being gay was a disease and a pathology. Um, so luckily we're in a very different place now than that. Although people are really fighting to get us back there. But anyway, so I was a very nervous, nervous kid um, and very self-contained nervous, nervous and bit the heck out of my nails, like raw, bloody, all the time. And then that's, that kept up through college, it kept up through until I was able to find, and this is relatively recent, quite honestly, um, that UV polish. So when I say UV polish, for those of you who don't know, which why would you know if you don't know, if you're not experienced with it, it is a type of nail polish and it comes in colors, but it also comes in clear, which is what I use. I cl use clear and I use a matte clear top coat. And you put on different coats of it. And as you do, uh, it stays, it's called gel, UV gel. And it's thick. It's basically like a nail polish, like a thick nail polish. And you put it on and it goobers onto your nails. And whoopsies. Oh man, just got my paintbrush sideways in the paint and it um, seals your nails and so you hit it with the UV 
light, ultraviolet light, which they have these little machine things that you can buy on wherever, Amazon, whatever, blah, 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 any of those places. And um, they're, they're not expensive anymore. Um, they're very common now. And beauty of it is you do them at home and, and my nails just look like regular people nails instead of horrible little stumps that are extremely painful. Um, and it makes it so that there's no rough edges, which is what my nerves do. I pick up the rough edges. And it makes it so that I have regular fingers. I know it's weird. It sounds like a weird thing, but you'd be surprised at how many people bite the hell out of the nails. Um, and what's funny is that I have sort of a heightened awareness of it, of course, because um, I did it for so long. So I notice it on actors when they are nail biters. Nobody else seems to notice it, unless I point it out, because I notice those kinds of very minutia details. There we go. This is good. Gooping it in there. I'm trying to make sure I don't break any more of these. Are they carbuncles? Oh, I just thought of that one word. I don't even know what the hell a carbuncle is. Or is it a barnacle? Um, what's a carbuncle? Huh. Um, comment if you know what a carbuncle is. Um, it's a, I think it's a nautical thing. Or, you know, naval, navy thing, a water thing. Yeah, so anyway. So it was kind of funny. I was watching... Lord of the Rings series. It was The Hobbit, actually, I think. No, it was Lord of the Rings. And Bilbo Baggins. Bilbo or his nephew, I don't remember which is which in which. But anyway, um, one of the Bagginses is, and it, was, it is in Lord of the Rings, the young man who plays the character is a nail biter or was a nail biter um, because they actually emphasized it in the character great great makeup people to notice it and uh emphasize it by the way they dirtied up his fingers and you could tell that he's chewing on his nails and the whole deal and i don't think you can do that to a person's fingers without them actually doing it themselves so they may have said don't worry about it we actually like the character um have being a nail biter this is all weird stuff that when you're doing TV, so I did a number of TV ads, a large number of TV ads, and with a lot of, um, a lot of hand stuff, a lot of showing how things work, blah, 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 blah. I worked for a lot of different companies and different venues, and I ended up doing B, what's called B-roll a lot for TV ads. And, um, Quite a bit of A roll, the really significant number of B roll, which is basically your background person, or you're you're showing how it works, or you know you do the he puts the thing in the thing and it works, and you just see a person's hands, or you see the guy who's falling off the ladder. That was my favorite one, actually, falling off a ladder, literally on the side of a house, and the guys were like, no, 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 we can't write that in. Producers were like, no, we can't have you falling off a ladder, and like, no, dude, I can totally do it if you cut from one went to the next, I'll like land. It's called acting. And they were like, oh, I don't know, well, we'll try it. It was for, <laughs> it's all product stuff. So it was for um, ladder stabilizers. And like if you're working outside and you fall off the ladder and instead of just going, ah, I literally fell off the ladder. But when we did it, I was like a few feet up falling off the ladder. And then when we landed, I actually like did this big old dramatic landing at the bottom. So that was actually my favorite thing because I was like, I'm actually acting in a product shoot. But it is very hands oriented because it's showing how this works. It's showing how the, that works. It's the, you know, all of this stuff. And I'm a guy, so it was mechanically oriented and it was car oriented, blah, blah, blah. Very, you know, very, if you're a guy, you're gonna like this type of stuff. Whatever, I knew how it all worked. Um, and had fun with it. I had a blast. I absolutely loved doing it. But my hands were a real issue because I bit my nails. 
So I was constantly having to take care of, it was, it was very um, weird for somebody like me, but what's kind of funny is that when you do these shoots, they literally, they see everything and they point out everything and they have no problems, they being the producers, have no problems just being like, oh God, your hands look terrible today. And it's like, thanks. I'm not at all self-conscious about my hands to start with. Thanks for pointing it out. And, and then they have to discuss amongst themselves, well, how are we going to fix this? Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to be quiet, even though the talent is standing right here next to me. And um, I'm going to discuss the person as if they are not standing right next to me. And it's very interesting because you become sort of a thing to some people, to some producers. And um, they'll be like, oh my gosh, his hair looks terrible. Can you do this and this and this? The director will say that to like the producer or to the makeup person. And it's kind of interesting because you don't, it, it's an interesting experience when you first go through that because you're a thing. You're literally like, you know, your furniture. Oh, I don't, don't really like the color of the upholstery. Can we change the upholstery on that? Or, you know, um, oh no, that one doesn't suit me when you're in auditions for, for TV and any kind of stuff that you, you can, it's kind of funny because even when I was auditioning for opera, people would be like, I would literally not get gigs because I'm six feet tall. Oh, you're, you're too tall. The, the soprano that we already chose is um, five foot, blah, blah, blah. Or especially when I was doing baritone stuff, oh no, you're six feet tall. The tenor's only five foot, you know, six. And we're, we need somebody shorter. I'm like, really? Really, you're not gonna hire me. Your best option, just ask me. I'm your best option. Um, because of my height in an opera. Um, really? And then I did get some gigs. <laughs> On the other end of that, I got gigs where I heard other people who were so good. Holy crap, holy. These fabulous tenors, these fabulous baritones who were shorter than me and didn't get the gigs. I can only assume because the directors couldn't envision the person in that role because they didn't have the vision to see them in any other size. I mean, I played a 90 year, 98 year old man in Yeoman of the Guard because I got called in last minute and had to figure out some way to to um, do the character or, and the, the staging when I was like, oh, I don't know the staging, so I need to make him really, really old. So I, I characterized him as a 98, the first Yeoman in Yeoman of the Guard. It was super fun. Rick Truman directed it. He was fabulous to work with. Um, he's always fabulous. He's just a fabulous person. And um, But it was funny because I became about five foot four. I'm six feet. Folded myself in half. Became this little old man. Uh, like, like old man. I, I played him as old as I could possibly do. Did, did my makeup old. Um, not over the top old. This is small theaters at the Folly Theater in um, Kansas City. But um, I had a blast with it. Saying the, the role of the first year, I mean, it's, it's a small role, but it was super, super fun. And the guys who were in the course with me in, the, in that show, um, I told them, I said, so if I screw up and I go the wrong way staging wise, I mean, I literally like learned the whole show like in a week. I was doing a, a different show with, um, maybe it was, was it Linda or was it Rick who, anyway, the director, and um, they lost, they didn't have a first yeoman or whatever, whatever the hell happened with it. I learned it last minute. And I was like, okay, here we go. Learning the music, which I'm able to do very quickly. Um, and if I go the wrong direction, you guys, you now have a reason to keep me by the arm and drag me to where I need to go next. I know my music perfectly, but not so sure sometimes about the, the I think I had like three re three rehearsals. Um, it's like a dress rehearsal. There was like one rehearsal, dress rehearsal, and then we went on. And I was like, ah, here we go. And it's like, guys, just drag me wherever. And Phil Etherton, Phil Etherton, fabulous bass baritone. Um, sweetest guy on the planet. Wonderful, wonderful person. Um, he was in it. And he was like, okay. Took me by the arm, literally. And and played it up beautifully because he's freaking hilarious 
and a sweet guy to, to, to boot, but um, he did a great job leading me around the stage. And, and there were a few times where I, because I just let him lead me. I, at that point, I was just like, I right, excellent. I can just focus on my music because I trust, I trust Phil. I had done quite a number of stuff, of uh, um, shows with him at that point. Um, and I was just like, dude, show me where to go and let's get there. And he was awesome because he played it into his role. He wrapped it into his role as the um, <laughs> yeoman of the guard, caretaker of the first yeoman in Yeoman of the Guard. It was, it was awesome. So you never know what direction this stuff is going to take you. I have no idea how I got on that topic. Wow. Um, talk about my brain going in different directions, right? When you're painting. There we go. All right, so this is good. I'm going to go into orange here. So I'm going to continue on this, apparently in future episodes. Oh, this is cool. Oh, but I want to get into this too. Um, but let's continue with this. Now we're coming into multicolors of the bright colors. As we go, let me give you a close up of what I've been working on. So I'm using the brush this way. I'm getting inside without pushing too hard, I'm putting the paint on the inside and twirling. So you'll see that I get in at different angles and try to get it in there. Now with this one, you'll notice it's got partial browns, partial orange, partial pink, right? So that coral color, it's literally called, I think, coral. Or the, the one that was next to it was coral. So I'm gonna bring that over here, the coral and this bronze. Little guys are gonna go bronze. I want to get these covered in paint so then I can really start coloring them if I want to change the colors. Get paint on the inside and it's going to reinforce them big time. The cool part is because these are um, opaque, they're, they're actually, the light comes through them because they're so thin. And um, so I can see whether or not I'm covering very well on the inside of them. Um, when I see just these individual ones, I can see it when the light really comes through from outside. That means that I haven't coated it enough with paint. There we go. Alrighty. How much time do I have? Oh, I got a few minutes. Here we go. So, anywho. Yeah, there we go. Getting these little guys so they stand out, but also so they're actually coated with paint. Yeah, that one's got that one's completely coated now. Try to keep it off the blue as much as possible. Use another brush, blend that out, and ta-da. Now one of my brushes rolled into my paint. What in the world do I do? That down here on, on the, oops, it's in front of me. I'm gonna use it. Rolled into the orange paint. It's a nice brush. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna stick this in water so that we don't ruin, completely ruin it. You probably can't see the water, but it's in water now. And I'm going to go with this orange that brush went into and coat some more of these little guys. Get this guy going on the front, get some ink on there. Now you'll notice I'm not doing the brush technique where I wet one side, dry the other, Yada yada. Well, no, I'm not because I really what I want to do is I want to get this paint on here and I want to get paint enough paint on here so that it not only reinforces them, 
colors them and all of that, all of the above, but also so that it's a little bit thicker and um, can give a little more, there we go, support to the shells. This one is interesting because it's not, this is the really gnarly one, the, the middle of the forehead one. It is not delicate compared to the others. It is definitely, I, maybe it's much older, I don't know, but it is much more, much thicker. There's a lot more to it. It's really fascinating how these are also similar. Now why, you may ask, and I did do this on purpose. I know, really? Because I think, how often do I actually do stuff on purpose? Um, pretty often, actually. I think it through and attack things and then go, oh, I should have done that the opposite way. And try to learn when I do it. Um, why did I do the body of the head first? The body of the head the majority of the head first and then leave the barnacles for second why do you think that is huh no that's wrong um <laughs> i don't know what you said um yes that is correct whatever you said no uh i don't know what you said so i'm just going to tell you my reasoning behind it there we go is that my thought was that really all this gooping around, if I hit the barnacles, then um, it doesn't really matter because I can, I was planning on needing to use a much finer brush for the shells um, from the start. I knew I was going to need a, a finer brush, so bumping up against the, the shells themselves was only going to reinforce them and give them more stability because of that extra paint on them. Uh, and the body, I could get better flow without having to worry about so meticulously staying away from the shells themselves. So that was my thought process. Do the big part first and then do the little detailed parts, the shells, uh, second or after the big part is done. And it seems to be working well. Now, did I know that that was gonna work? In my head, I was super confident-ish, uh, <laughs> right? Because it's like, well, I, I'm really not gonna know until I do it, because I've never painted shells on a person's head before, or a planter's head for that matter. It is a mannequin head. There we go. All right, so I am actually gonna continue this without you having to watch me. And I know, very rare, right? But it is little meticulous work. When I come back, I, it will be all dry. And, um, cause you get it, you get what I'm doing, you see it. And I am going to go and we will meet up next time like and subscribe say hello uh leave a comment and i will definitely see it i do look at all of the comments and um i hope you enjoyed this and get something out of it let me give you a close-up of what we just worked on together and it's nice to have a hole in his head that i can get to so really starting to get some brightness going on I've got the yellow. I don't like the green. We're not gonna go with the green again. If you see this, before I publish the next iteration, let me know. Oh, I've got another piece fall off. Um, let, let me know your thoughts or suggestions. If I've already published it, let me know your thoughts and suggestions. Say, hey, you should have used this color or think about doing it this color next time. Cause maybe I'll make another one with shells. Now, since this is so cool, maybe I'll go like super crazy with shells. We'll see. I don't know. I may do um, one where I've got, because I've got a lot of shells. Maybe I'll do one where it's the plastic or the foam head that I can glue them onto and do them where I just clear coat the shells. That's an option as well. That way it'll stabilize them. All right. I hope you have a wonderful day and um, love other people. Love yourself. 
and there's not enough, enough love in the world, so spread as much love as you can. All right? Bye. See you next time.